Hey up troops, it's A Littleton here again with another video and this time we're going to go through how to play Capcan. But let me just warn you, there's a couple of traps either side of this door frame so just please be careful. One of the operators that I dislike playing against the most along with Frost, I walk into Capcan traps all the time. It's probably my age but the worst thing that I do right and I do it all the time, I'll drone a doorway and I'll say right watch out lads, there's a Capcan trap on this door and then five seconds later I'll come off the drone start pushing a defender and i'll walk through the cap counter trap. i do it every time so in this video we'll go through his loadout we'll go through the basics and we'll go through some site setup slash spots where cap can traps are really really effective there's obviously way more in the game but we'll go through three or four maps after we've been through the basics other than that i think that's probably enough waffling let's get stuck Right then, let's get started with Capcan's loadout, and this one's fairly cut and dry for me. I feel like I say it all the time though, but the 9x9 team BSN, the Saz G12, or the Sausage, and then you've got the PMM and the GSH, Impacts and C4. Um, 9x9 team BSN is actually a really, really solid gun, as Army shares it as well, obviously. The 1.5 with a flash hider on this works really, really well. Um, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever used that shotgun on siege at all can you have an extended barrel you can't i don't think i've ever used it so I, I genuinely don't know the damage doesn't look great for most shotguns down at 50 um but see, I, look if it's any good let me know but for me the 919 i think it's really really he's really really solid um smg on defense especially with that 1.5 and the flash either when it comes to the pistols the only real difference is capacity and damage The PMM having 61 damage and the uh, the GSH having 14, uh, sorry, 44. Um, the main difference as well is the capacity. So 18 rounds in the GSH, 8 rounds in the PMM. The PMM, however, there's something about it, man. It just means you hit your shots. Obviously, being 61 damage is massive, so I would always roll PMM personally. How many times you actually have to shoot 18 rounds of a pistol before you either die or get the kill? It's not very often, is it? Uh, impacts or C4. If no one's making rotates with shotguns, then take the impacts, but... Being able, to, being able to play cap can and then go below at the end of the round to C4 from below is something that I really enjoy doing, especially on coastline. Um, and I'll come on to that shortly. But yeah, definitely for me, uh, 9x19, PMM, Nitro. Right then, getting started with Capcan's basics. Capcan gets access to these things. These things are called EDDs, or Entry Denial Devices. We're going to call them Capcan Traps for the purpose of this video. Capcan Traps go on door frames or window frames or any frame. This is important to remember, by the way. Any frame that can be barricaded like this, you can put a Capcan on. So where there's a, like a, a hallway, um, or a, I'll just nip upstairs and show you quickly. You know the window frame that you can um, put a barricade on here on coastline. We've already gone off course and we're on the first clip. See this here? You can barricade this. That means you can also put a Capcan trap on it. I don't know of anywhere, tell me if I'm wrong by the way, but I don't know of anywhere where you can't, where you, where you can barricade, but you can't Capcan trap. It sees it as the same thing, like a door frame. Anyway, we've gone off track already. We're only on clip number one. So these go on door frames and they can go as low as this. Or they can go as high as this. Now, when you're putting the cap can traps down, what you want to do is look as low as possible on the door. So there is, if you're the attacker coming through here, you can already see from here which one's more obvious. Just by looking at those two traps as you come around this corner, you can see this one's way more obvious than this one. So you want to try and get them as low as possible most of the time. However, not all of the time, but we'll come on to that later. The way of getting them on as low as possible is walk up to your door frame, look onto the floor, and just keep tapping forward. And the moment you see it go on the lowest part of the door frame there, get it down. Now, you can actually put multiple cap can traps on doors, which is not something you used to be able to do, but you can now. As you can see, there's three on this door frame. When it comes to putting multiple traps on doors, this is another good thing to remember. Don't just put one trap down, then look at the door frame for your next trap. And I'm going to put something side by side. I've done that there. You can see there's a gap in between. On this side, we'll put the first one as low as possible. When it comes to mounting the second one, look at the first one that you place down and do the same thing again. Only press that down when the, the prompt comes up. And you can already see there the difference in the gap. Small gap there, bigger gap there. Again, the lower down they are, the less obvious they're going to be. So look at the floor until the door frame turns up and then pr press the gadget button. And when it comes to putting two down, do the same thing again, but with the device. And again, if it comes to putting the third down, don't just look at the door frame here. Look at the most recent one you put down. Wait till you get that first prompt. Put it in. And again, you'll see the gap is minimal. So when it comes to damage for Capcan, each trap does 60 damage. Now, if there's two traps on the door, obviously it's going to do 60 times 2, 120. 
There's three traps on the door. It'll be 60 times three, 180. There's no point in putting more than three traps on one door, really. Um, you know, you're not going to do any more than 180 damage to a person because the, the most amount of health someone can have is 125 plus a finger boost. The three traps will kill every operator regardless of health. The only times it won't kill an operator is if Monty comes through it and he faces the EDD as it goes off because when a shield operator trips a, a Capcan trap, if the shield faces the Capcan trap, the shield takes some of the, uh, like, absorbs some of the damage. If Monty went through like this, it would do full damage, but if Monty went through with his shield facing forward, the shield would take some of the damage. So it's 60 damage. Now, I've got Ash here on the other PC, and as Ash comes through, I'm on 100 HP at the minute. Ash is now down to 40 HP. So using a little bit of quick maths, we're just going to go up to this wall here, get rid of this picture. We're going to use this as a place to demonstrate how many traps you need to kill per um, each health operator. So with Ash being three speed, she's got 100 health. Um, if someone's two speed, they have 110 health. And if someone's a one speed, they have 125 health. So it's going to take one, uh, sorry, two traps to kill a one, uh, three speed. It's going to take two traps to kill a two speed. And it's going to take three traps to kill a one speed. Now, there are some implications around that, like I just said, in terms of shields and finger boosts, but that's generally the sort of the information to go from there. Now, Capcan traps are very easily countered, so you need to try and hide them as well as you can. Now, why we've come up to this door here is I think this is a really good example. You would never, in my opinion, ever put a Capcan trap on that side of this door. And the reason I say that is as follows. Any attacker is going to approach this door from this sort of angle, either from down this hallway well, I'm going to come up main stairs and come at it from like this. That trap is always going to be more visible than the trap that goes on this side of the door. And I know this is super obvious, right? But as you're walking down the corridor here, you can see that trap. If you're coming up the stairs, you can see that trap sooner than you can. You can't even see this one. But you want to think about the ways that attackers are going to be walking through the doorway that you're about to cap can trap. So if we just, we've used that door as an example, we'll go and use Hall of Fame door as an example. So when somebody comes through Hall of Fame and goes into VIP, they're always going to be looking to the left, right? So you come through this door as an attacker, and you smash this down, you come in here. You're always at this angle, right? So you're always going to see a trap that's here. However, it's not very often you're going to approach this door from this angle. Not very often at all, because when you're attacking, you want to be looking at the angle of the room, don't you? So you wouldn't walk up to this door like this, because the defenders are going to be here. So you'd walk up to the door on a better angle like this, opening the room as you go, right? So this door, again, you would always want your traps on this side of the door. I know I didn't follow my own spacing rule there. I'm trying to be fast. Because as you come in as an attacker here, you never see those traps once. Like even if you came from this side, as you come in, you start going around this way. Again, you don't see the traps at all. Compare that with putting them on this side. I know this is a really boring subject, but the amount of people that put Capcan traps on what, in my opinion, is the wrong side of the door is untrue. Uh, sorry, untrue, unreal. So again, you come in for that. I don't know why I just ping that. Ignore that ping. Bear with me. Walk in. And again, you can see that there. So you've just got to think about it. If you're an attacker, how do you approach a doorway? And what's the best way to make sure those Capcan traps stay hidden? When it comes to placing traps as well, you've also got to think about drones. If an attacker is going to walk through Hall of Fame, you would think 99 out of 10, way up, 99 times out of 10, they're going to drone through this door, right, and then go this way. So you've got to think that if they are going to drone, they're probably going to drone in, they're going to go to theatre, they're going to make sure, sorry, to penthouse, they're going to make sure penthouse is clear, theatre looks clear from here, okay, yeah. Then the drone comes back this way, and then they drone VIP, and they go, yeah, okay, VIP looks clear. At that point, they've still never looked this side of that door. Nobody drones in. If I'm a drone, excuse me, I'm a drone. Bzzz, you never come in and go, oh, I'll just have a look here. No one ever does that. However, if you were to put your traps here, you might get missed by the drone on the way in, but when they come through and drone VIP and penthouse, sorry, the drone penthouse, I've got every call for call uh, for um, coastline wrong so far. When they come into penthouse, they go, oh, yeah, that's clear. Right, okay, I'll just check VIP is clear. Oh, shit, there's a cap can trap there. So, you've just got to think about the drone route they're going to take, the route that they take into the building, and just by thinking about things a little bit more, you'll definitely make Capcom traps more effective. Right, so now I've got that off my chest, we need to talk about the double bluff. What's the double bluff, I hear you ask? Well, it's this. You put a trap this side, but you also put two traps this side. Therefore, when they come through this door, you go, oh, okay, there's a Capcom trap there. And they shoot that trap, and they think, oh, okay, that's clear. Bang, we've got two this side as well. 
So you can really get into the enemy's head a little bit. You can place a decoy trap on a side that's an obvious side of the door that they're going to go into. And place two or three traps on the other side of the door, hoping that they're not going to think, well, he's not stupid enough to put a trap on both sides of the door, right? So let's go and try that over at um, Hall, of, uh, not Hall of Fame. Why do I keep getting every call out wrong? Let's go and try that over at Luggage. Do the same thing again. You put your decoy trap on this side of the door. And then you put your actual traps that you want them to go off on this side of the door. So again, someone's coming out from uh, from theatre. Wait, we got a call out, right? Someone's coming down from theatre and they go, oh, oh, okay, watch out for that, right? Shoot that. Anyway, oh, we've still got two traps here. So by sacrificing a trap to make it obvious that there's one there can actually benefit you sometimes by double bluffing the enemy. Another tip you can try as well, but I think this one doesn't help that much, but it does help. You can see on the floor here that there's been barricaded. If you barricade a door and then rip the barricade down, the outside of the barricade will always remain on the door. You see the yellow strips down each side will remain on the door. It only stays on one side though. So if I barricade this side and then rip it down, it won't stay on both sides. It'll now end up on this side, okay? So by leaving that there, it just gives you an extra tiny little bit of cover for the Capcan trap. If you were to put it slightly higher and you're coming up the stairs, you can see now that instead of seeing the Capcan trap, we can see a little bit of the edge of the barricade rather than the trap. And it doesn't hide it. You know, if you're coming from this angle, it would be fairly obvious. But if you're coming from a different angle that just hides it by just even a couple of millimeters, it could be something that benefits you. But any door you barricade, when you tear that barricade down, the outside is always going to remain there. Again, there. And it's something you can use as an attacker. You can go, you, you know, you know if something's been barricaded. But again, you put a trap on. And as you're coming this way, you might be looking here. We can now, we can only just see it now. Whereas if that barricade wasn't there, that would definitely be more visible. Even from here, it's hiding it a little bit more, just the edge of it. So, look, it's not something that's going to make them completely hidden. It's not going to make it, like, 100% a, a effective. But for the sake of putting a barricade up and ripping it down, and you've got a bit of time in the prep phase, I'd probably do it if I were you. Okay, so let's get started with some Capcan spots and Capcan setups. And I'm going to show you what I always do on Coastline when I'm defending Hooker. Firstly, always shoot the Vars or punch the Vars. It's just tradition. So we're going to go over to where we talked about before in Hall of Fame. I'm going to put two this side. This is exactly what we did earlier on. Again, look at the old trap to make sure you get them close and one this side. I do this every time. It, the amount of times that people shoot that one and walk through, we've talked about that already. It's insane. The next thing I'm going to do is put two this side of Hall of Fame. That's where I put the five traps. What I'm then going to do is I might as well tell you what I do for the round as well, because in case you want a bit of inspo, always shoot these things. You can hide in here if you need to. If you hear someone's coming up main, you can jump in here and hide. Love doing this. And then they walk along, you'll pop. Then... Go downstairs and punch the bottom panel of the front door twice. This is nothing to do with Capcan this bit, by the way, but I might as well tell you. Punch the bottom panel twice, okay? Now you only need to punch that door once to run out. Then we come upstairs, shoot this vase. Don't know why, I just always do. Look in these holes here for drones and also here and here for drones and also under the couch for drones sometimes. Then I make six holes along here. And I always make the one on the right slightly further than the, the top one. Right, it's not the best. From there, now we can hold the Hall of Fame door. And if you're coming through Hall of Fame, you look at these holes before you look at this one. Don't make two punch holes because it's really obvious from the other side. So, I mean, if you're guessing which one someone's looking through there, it's going to be that massive one there, right? Well, I don't know why those other two punch holes here haven't gone through. But anyway, it looks like that. So yeah, always shoot the wine bottle as well. Don't know why, it's just little things that I do. I have habits on maps. So now we can hold the Hall of Fame from here. The next thing I do is I always shoot the bottom left of the X twice. Now we've got a little angle for a spawn peak. We haven't broken the glass. It's difficult to see from outside. And what you want to look at is, let me just get rid of some more windows so it's easier to show you. But you want to be looking at below that wooden bit there and above this bonnet here. So when you're on that angle, it's like this area here. But don't break the glass, otherwise it's too obvious. What I then do is wait and listen. If I don't hear a spawn peak... The amount of times that people repel up this side of the building is untrue. So if you don't hear the spawn peak, but you hear someone outside, get ready to jump down. Watch for kitchen, though, as you do, because people there's always a knock that sneaks in kitchen. And if you hear the repel, punch this once, run outside, get your freebie, and run back in. 
That's what I do. I, I, I'm a real creature of habit on Siege. And if you ever watch my stream on Twitch, go and follow me on Twitch. It's exactly the same as YouTube, twitch.tv forward slash alittleton. If you follow me on Twitch, you'll see me do this every night we play Coastline. I'm a, I really need to like change up what I do on some maps, but I'm a real creature of habit. So yeah, I'll hold that from here. We know we've got the traps over there. This side of the map is pretty locked down. Make sure, just in case you're holding here, make sure you leave the front door cam as the cam that you go to when you get on cams. So if you think you hear something below, you can quickly just go... And have a look. You don't have to start trying to find that cam. Just make sure you leave it on that cam ready. And that's it. What I then do later on in the round is you can hold uh, Aqua Balk from here. And if you don't get any action, I always go below to Hooker and C4 below from Hooker. That's what I do on every coastline round. It's really sad, isn't it? Oh, come on, Andy. Hit the C4. So, yeah. Anyway, the point of this was we've got sort of gone on for an extra minute or two there. But the point was, put your Capcan traps in the uh, Hall of Fame and the entrance to... Uh, Entrance to, to Penthouse on Coastline. We're now on to what should be every Capcan main's favourite map, Border. This is Capcan's paradise. We're going to start with a couple of spots. I'm not going to go through whole site setups like I just did for Coastline. It wasn't really a site setup, but you know what I mean, a setup. Uh, I'm just going to show you some good spots. Now, this used to be an insane spot. If you had Capcan's elite traps, it used to morph into the, into the couch, but they moved the couch slightly now. The couch used to be like in line with where my crosshair is here. So you could like morph them into the side of the couch. However, they can still be quite hidden in this sort of marble um, pillar, whatever this is. You try and put them in here. You'll see that the trap is still somewhat hidden and a lot smaller than they are in other door frames. A couple of traps there always goes down well. If someone's coming from this side, obviously, even from here, though, it's still not the easiest thing to see that. Do you know what I mean? It still blends in quite well. And obviously coming from this side. You're always going to be looking here or here. You just don't see them at all. So a couple of good spots there. Now, the reason border is so good for Capcan is there's two spots right here outside of the split door on uh, on office. You can put Capcan traps on both sides of these doors. So you can put Capcan traps here, and these work really, really well. And again, you can do the same here. So anyone pushing from break or 90... When they're worried about the split door and top east and everything else you have to be worried about around here. The guy, and everyone always ADS is this angle here, right? You get someone here a lot. So when you start coming down here, you're always looking at this angle. Before you know it, you've gone through two traps here. And again, when you're exactly the same when you're coming down this side. You're so worried about 90 and the split door. As you're looking around here, you just don't see them there. Again, don't forget you can barricade these. You can put traps up anywhere you can barricade. People forget, you don't often see those barricaded, but that's for good reason. But it's uh, don't forget you can barricade them because it's a doorway still. The other place that people forget or that people don't think about is downstairs here. Again, another doorway that can be barricaded. And again, another doorway that can have a couple of traps on. Especially when you're attacking... Ta if you're defending towers here, you wouldn't put them this side, you'd put them this side. If you were defending upstairs, you'd put them like here. So anyone coming this way would get hit by but down here you know you get the people coming through attacking teller's window can you imagine you, there's no way anyone expects two capcan traps there right late in the round they're trying to push teller's window and like oh oh it works so so well there's a lot of good places on uh, on board for capcan but they're a couple of my favorites Another fantastic Capcan playground is Villa and on the north side of the map especially. If anyone follows the attack guide, then watch out for this, that I, the Villa attack guide that I did the other day. Because if you think about Villa, just think about how many doors you have to go through to get to where you want to be, right? So we come through closet, we go through one, two, three, four, five, six doors before we get anywhere near we want to, where we want to be. Six doorways, and that's not including if you go and clear a statue as well. We'll come through Master um, this side. So there's a ton of doorways to put Capcan traps. This one is always golden. Two traps here. Again, what I was telling you earlier about the way that people drone. Someone drones this way. You know, I'm, I'm a drone. Buzz, buzz. Here I come as a drone. Oh, nothing there. All right, cool. Let's go this way. No one really drones on Luke's this side of the door again. So you could, a bit like we did on Coastline, you could put a... Uh, a both Capcan trap there. Someone comes through. Oh, there's a Capcan trap here. Boom, right, that's sorted. Banger! How many times am I going to do that this video? I don't know. Anyway, they're a really good spot. Another really good spot is when they get out onto 90. This one is okay, but sometimes players will sometimes peak top red from here. But generally, your main concern from here is 90. So this side here works well. Lower down than that, but this is just for demonstration purposes. 
Someone gets to this side of the door. Right, okay, got to worry about 90. Yeah, it's clear. Push. Okay, ow. I don't know why I keep, like, demonstrating walking through a Capcan trap, in case you don't know what this is for. So this room's interesting, by the way, just going off on a tangent. Some people call it wolf, and some people call it pig. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but that's if you're ever wondering why, that's why. We've got a wolf here that says... Wol wolfery? Wol wolfy or something? And then we've got... Hugo Boar. Sounds like a knockoff designer brand. Hey, I like your shirt, mate. Where's that from? Oh, it's, uh, it's Hugo Boar. Anyway, so, yeah, loads of doors on the north side of the map, and then also downstairs. When you're defending the north side, so when you're defending Statue Trophy, you're generally going to have people pushing underneath. And again, we've got doors, one, two, if you're going through Memo, got the double door here, the pantry door here, you've got the china door. This door frame's a classic as well here. Same thing again, no one's coming through here looking like this, or no one's getting to here and looking this way, it just doesn't happen. This is a good spot sometimes to hide if you ever need to here. If someone's pushing, you can just go yoink. But yeah, you get the point here. You know, you're never going to look at that. And it's where people just least expect a Capcan trap. Villa, another really good place. And the final map we're going to talk about really here is Bank. And we're going to talk about the two front doors. I know this is picked up on a lot of people that do Capcan videos. But for anyone who doesn't know, you can hide Capcan traps in these door frames really well. You get this sort of thing that sticks out here. And the, the trap sort of blends into it a little bit, but also is hidden by it a bit as well. So let me just show you what it looks like. I mean, you can see how well that blends in there. You, you're going to have to do really well to spot that. It blends in with like the kick plate or the skirting board at the bottom. And also what you can do is, you see this bit that sticks out? You can get one right in the middle of there, which helps hide it a little bit more as well. Just helps blend it in a little bit. That one's obviously a lot more obvious because it's a completely different colour. It's exactly the same on this side as well. So you can get that as, get that as low as possible. Do what we talked about earlier. You can see how well that blends in, and again, you can put one in this middle bit here. I mean, two really well hidden traps there. And not really where people are expecting them. You'd think that most people are going to put traps on these three doors. And... The other one I like on Bank is up on Janet. It's a bit of a journey, but we'll get there. Up on Janet, on the right-hand side of the door as you push in. Generally, people are going to be pushing Janet from top square. Not from here, because you're going to get a dome from 90 if you push from this side. As you push in up here. Two here. And again, you sort of come around this door, you check these angles. You, by the time you get here, you're not looking down. Really good spot. You just have to be careful sometimes, because it gets grenaded quite a lot. You're going to have someone who has like a grenade here, bounce it off the door frame to try and stop anyone who's killing here. But it's try and stop anyone who's killing here. Try and stop anyone who's playing there. The other cracking one is open area. Now you have to be really careful here because drones get an open area really early. You're going to get drones that sit on these shelves and especially these shelves. You want to try and get rid of them as quickly as you can. If I were you, if you're going to do this, I'd recommend that you come upstairs with a solace. Um, but this, again, really well hidden because of how dark the bottom of the door is. And again, when people are pushing in open, they're absolutely not looking that side towards the filing cabinets. They blend in well. Looking this way. I don't know. If, can you put them this side? No, you can't put them that side. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard this, we haven't talked about it, but Capcan traps do make a noise. Um, so, yeah, do listen out for that. They're not very loud, but they do make a noise. The other good one as well is straight into small office. You're going to get your Abana that comes in here to try and open the office. And again, not going to be looking for traps. And cut all the Maverick comes in. Another really good spot. But yeah, there you go. There's someone bank for you to have a go at. So there we have it. There's some of the best spots on how to play Capcan that I think. He's a great operator. Free kills, great gun, C4. There's literally nothing to, to not like about Capcan, other than playing against him. We've started doing this at the end of the videos now, but if you've got this far, I really appreciate it. Any comment or like that you do on the video helps engagement. It helps YouTube think that people commenting on it, the video is blowing up, so to speak, and it's, it's going to push it to other users as well. So if you've got this far, give me a mug in the comments below. Other than that, I really appreciate you watching. I really appreciate you getting involved. And I'll see you next time. Cheers!